protections from redundancy. Uh, so this is the pregnancy and family leave bill. Uh, so the key thing around this is just to make it clear, this is not saying that you cannot make somebody who is pregnant redundant. Um, by the way, I just realized how that sounded. I'm not saying we have to make people who are pregnant redundant, by the way. But when you're going through a redundancy process, you may be, um, you know, looking at a, quite a large number of staff. And, you know, quite a lot of our clients, they range. You can have redundancies that look at just one, two staff to redundancies that look at 500 staff and things that are in between. So um, so it does really depend. But the whole point from this is it's not protection that says you can't make individuals redundant. Obviously, this is a business-led scenario. So what is needed within your business, not telling you who you have to keep and, and, and retain your business. But the whole onus of this is to provide additional protections, which I think um, it probably, if it came into force, would be up to six months. Um, that after the point, in, you know, of during pregnancy, maternity, on the way back, adoption leave as well, um, that you have protections for six months, whereby you have the the um, priority status in terms of being posted into suitable alternative posts, being redeployed into other alternative posts. That means that those individuals that fall into that category shoot to the top of the list above and beyond everybody else that they should naturally start into those. So just, just as a case point and example, if I have five people, then we're going through a redundancy process and uh, one of those people is actually coming back from maternity. And when we're looking at this, we have uh, one vacancy that would be a natural slotting in for those people in that post. When I say naturally slotting in, 50% or more similar to the role that they're in at the moment in time would have slotting in rights to that. Normally, what you would say, if you take the pregnant person out of that situation entirely, is it'll be a selection process you'd have to go through. With this, what you'd be saying is that one person has more priority status than the other four to naturally slot into that role. So they would naturally go into that first, may be left with the other four people still at risk of redundancy. So these are the protections that are going to come into place um, to help and support um, these particular group of people in this way. Again, um, you know, in the realm of things, it's, it's one of those practicalities that you hope not to come up against. Um, nobody goes into business looking to make redundancies. Uh, this is not what you want to be doing. And, and I always say this to everybody when we do redundancies at the moment in time. But at the moment, you know, redundancy processes are the worst processes to be involved in. I It's the part of the job that we do that I hate the most because it's just shit, to be honest with you. It's horrible. Um, but it's part of business and it's part of life and it's part of what you have to to come against um, as you're trying to help protect businesses to move forward, maybe to restructure, to change, alter course, and ultimately then to grow and, and, and be sustainable thereafter. But they're not the things you want to be doing. So it's important to know, and if you are going to be going through these processes, pro processes, if you are going to be going through these processes, um, and, and you've got individuals that are obviously coming back from maternity, adoption leave, parental leave, shared care leave, then you need to be aware of these particular uh, uh, ramifications as you're going through that to make sure that we are looking after and protecting those individuals and treating them as we legally should be. Uh, otherwise, that's a huge claim that could potentially come forward. Um, so 